Hello everyone, welcome back to our second class, art class for beginners. Welcome to Gallery Papillon. In our first lesson, we learned how to observe different shades of color that make up an object that we wish to paint. In this case, it was an apple. Apples come in all shapes and colors and provide us with a challenge to observe. Here, are some of your drawings sent to me. Thank you all very much for your submissions. And now we'll look at another object. And now we'll look at another object. Let's try chairs. And why chairs? Well, they come in all shapes and colors and provide us with yet another challenge to observe. In fact, you are probably sitting on one right now. Where would we be without a chair? Here are some examples of how I've used chairs as a, an object to paint. Uh, this was painted in the courtyard of a chateau in southern France, and that is my sun hat. And occasionally, I will try this exercise. I set aside 10 minutes and no more to paint an object. And this exercise will train you to observe quickly and to make some painting decisions quickly. And here are some of those results. And this comfortable sofa chair I painted and gave to a kind lady who was downsizing her apartment and offered some furniture for my use. Sofa chair. And while attending the National Gallery in London, I sat on a bench and use my pencil and paper to sketch Vincent van Gogh's chair. And one of my favorite objects to paint years ago was the beloved birch tree. And I chose to use this pattern of tall birches on these two backyard chairs, birch on chair. So now it's your turn and we're going to draw this chair. But again, before we draw, we need to observe. First things first, a combination of shapes, and we also see light in medium and dark colors or hues. Light, medium, and dark. And remember how we tried squinting? Lights and mediums and darks. Okay, take a seat. And you can use pencil or crayons or anything you want. So let's begin. I've got this beautiful chair, magenta. I see reds. I see some bright pinks. Let's start. So I showed you my tools. And I'm going to show you in this little program here how to mix some of these. I know that I'm going to need some of this medium magenta. I'll just put a little bit right there, nice and handy. And I think you can probably see where that's going to go. And that, of course, will go on the inside panels of that chair. But I also want you to think about, I'm not trying to recreate this chair. What I want to do is I want to create emotion. I want to get you to think about something more than just that chair. I want you to think of comfort. I want you to think of joy. I want you to think of fun. And that might also help you decide what colors you're going to use. So I've got my magenta out there and I know I'm gonna need some white of some kind. And I'm probably gonna need some darker shades to make that magenta turn a little darker. And as we've observed, there are certain colors, shades of light and medium and dark that we want to try. So some of you may decide you want to draw this with a pencil. That's fine. But I'm going to do it freehand. I'm, I'm excited about the possibility that I could create a chair freehand. So you see I'm just getting rid of that magenta. I'm going to roll up my sleeves because this often can be a messy job. So follow me along here. 
So I've got this comfy chair. Let's just see what happens here. And we'll just draw this down. And I'm just going to go with pink. And I, for now, this magenta, because I'm going to create the lights and darks later to try and represent that chair. But once again, think of the chair that you're drawing in front of you and think about what it means to you. I am a colorist, means I use colors to project emotion and passion. And colors can do that. For instance, if you paint in black, it means doom. If you paint in bright colors like the sky, light blues, it has a sense of joy to it. So I'm gonna choose to use colors that bring me joy. I know there's an arm that comes out here and I'm not aiming for per perfection. We also have in front of us a very perfect photo. So let's just draw this here. So I think that that's probably pretty good there. I'm gonna draw one side of it first. I notice how it comes down on a pretty sharp angle. Just imagine this is where you sit, you watch your favorite TV program, and let's go with that for now. And let's do the other side. We want to have this sort of reflect like a mirror image. You can always come back and correct it later, but I see that it looks something like that. And I know it starts there, and then it goes down. And once again, here's, these colors have the ability to do what you want. And if you don't like it, you can always paint over it, which is common amongst painters. Sometimes the first thing they paint isn't what they're looking for. Many of Van Gogh's paintings, for instance, were painted over. And the discovery is to find out later on that there actually is a painting underneath a painting. But more on that later. Okay, so now I've got, I think, really the shades I'm looking for. I want to, now I'm going to start with the lighter color. So note my magenta here. And I don't even have to put in much white. And I get sort of a medium shade there. Let me just add a bit more. And you're going to note how that changes. It goes from, gives me that brightness I'm looking for. So let's just see what we can do with this. And you're probably wondering, what is he doing with those colors? Well, this is what we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. And there's a nice bright pink along the bottom here. And maybe you're using wax crayons. Maybe you've got magic markers. Different ways in which you can create this. Or maybe it's a pencil. And we'll be getting into some of the charcoal and lead pencil exercises um, later on, as we get more experience, let's draw that a little bit longer. And I tell those who I, I paint with that we don't aim for perfection. And perfection is the enemy of the good, we are told. What I aim for is something that evokes emotion. And maybe that emotion is about, oh, how comfortable that chair must be. Oh, how I'd love to be sitting in that chair. So let's go with that. And I now need a bit of a brighter color. Maybe, maybe this is the time to maybe add a bit more brightness to that. I'm going to work with that pink a little bit longer. And just draw that across there. So again, we're not aiming for perfection. If you aim for perfection, you could be painting for a long time. And then who is it that defines perfection, I ask? 
All right, so now I got a bright red there. So this is gonna be a bit of a challenge. So I'm gonna throw in a little bit of this. It's called Quina Credone Red Light. And you'll see how different it is, all right? It's almost red like a fire truck. I'm gonna just experiment with this because it may not be the right shade of that cushion. It may just completely change it. Is that, maybe a little that. And I'm gonna just draw in this middle part here. And I want to commend all of you that submitted your apples last week. It gave me great satisfaction to see, for some of you who I know personally, have drawn their first apple and with much amusement. So keep up the good work. And I'll also ask if you could send me your productions in this series. I'm very interested in terms of what you can do in terms of a chair. Now, I've got something going on here. And now I notice there's some real darkness going on here. So I'm just gonna draw that in so, while I'm at it. And you note that there's no straight lines when it comes to that, that darkness there. There we go. So now I also note, I need to draw a bit more pink in here. And don't have fears about what you paint or draw. The exercise is to learn and have some fun. Note there's a bit of darkness in the corners. That's where the, the cushion is beginning to show some shadows. We can also draw this in a bit like that, and a bit like that. And I'm using like a paper to paint on, and this is an inexpensive way to learn how to draw and paint, because you want to be able to do this carefully without making a lot of mess and not spend a lot of money doing so. So what else can we do here? So I want to just brighten up that pink again. And I'm using a technique called wet on wet. And what wet on wet means is that you're using, you're applying wet paint on top of wet paint, which means you need to have a pretty good understanding of how this color will change. Because you need to have some sense of what happens if I mix these two colors? What does it do to what I'm, what I'm trying to achieve here? I know there's also a bit of darkness going on in this top cushion. Again, I'm using these skills of, of observation, looking for changes in colors. There's plenty of places on this chair where I can do that. And I'm just gonna straighten that line up a bit. Yeah. Having a nice clean brush is good. Just straighten around the lines. In here as well. How's your chair coming anyway? There we go. I think when I'll add it, I need to draw some legs. And I think I'm just going to use purple. Now, there's something going on at the bottom there, something to stabilize it. There, that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the chair. I'll come back later after I've finished this chair. And here's my finished chair. This is what I've completed. And how does this look to you? I look forward to seeing what you've completed. Another approach is to deconstruct this same chair and to geometric figures and you can use construction paper for this approach. And so now that this class is finished, you can complete your artwork on your own and I hope that you'll send me your artwork to my email address. And if you've enjoyed this class and would like more, please let me know. You can subscribe to my channel.
We'll see you at class number three next Friday. Thank you.